Justin, Bob, and Ian. We are here together with my brother and associate Luis. And today I'm going to talk a little bit more about operational aspects, not so much about the structural engineering side, as my, as my associate did in the other presentation. I am going to talk about the direct engineering of a plated structure with very complex geometry. So, well, we are specialized in steel structures and also erection engineering, constructability. We have an office in the Netherlands and also another one in Brazil that was, has already been mentioned. And in this presentation, I'm really going to talk about erection engineering. What is erection engineering? Nowadays, we see that the tools for modeling and for the conception of these structures, they are giving the possibility to the architects and the engineers to create very complex curvy, dramatic structures, such as the grid shot that you see in the top, and also that the roof of that is the stadium that you see here with a very large span. These kind of structures, they end up requiring a lot of engineering for you to be able to erect them, to put them together, such as for in the case for the grid shot, you need a lot of temporary support, and also then for the long span in the stadium, you need to put the shoring towers, and then you need to make a full fledged modularization strategy. So erection engineering is basically taking the design from the engineer of record and thinking on how you can assist the, the fabricator, the erector, the general contractor on how to put together this structure safely, more efficiently, and cheaper. So the project that I am going to specifically talk about is one of the projects that we worked on in the last year. It is which the name is called the Tide. It is located in London, in the United Kingdom, in the Greenwich Peninsula Revitalization Project. It is a very vast project, and in this footbridge, the intention is to be a running track. In this first phase, it has around five kilometers of length, and uh, in the last phase, the final idea is to have the full length of a marathon. And as you can see, the geometry and the architecture is very well, very modern. Uh, these are steel structures, so with a plate, with a curved plate on the outer shell, and then everything inside is with stiffeners or ribs, very similar to what you would have in a ship structure, you could say. But as you can see, one of the main aspects of the structure is that you have the decks, and the, the columns, they, are comp they have completely different angles between themselves. So, how do you put this together? How do you fabricate and how do you erect? The, 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 the project was separated in, say, in several different islands that where they had from three to seven modules each and the modules they were counting on one another for their stability. Each one of the modules, they had around seven meters in height. The, area of the deck, of course, the, the deck, they had very different geometries, but usually it would be something around 10 meters to by 8 meters, and then the angle of the column, it could be up to 45 degrees, and the weight of them would be something between 20 to 30 metric tons. The challenges that we had in the project was, the first one, transportation. They had been fabricated, each one of the modules in completely fabricated this welded structure, this supposed welded <coughs> structure, was fabricated in Italy, close to Venice. Then it had to be put on a, on a sea transportation, a sea vessel to go around, even with open sea in the Atlantic, to reach London through the Thames River. And then, well, when it reached London, there was also a small section in which we had to make a road transportation using SPMTs. And then finally, there was the lifting for the final installation, which was a very complex operation. So the first thing that we did was the saddle design. The, the, for the saddles, the saddles are basically these devices that you see there that are holding this module as it is still laying on the ground. In this picture, you can see a little bit more of how different each module was between themselves. You can see some in which the the angle of the column is a little bit higher, some that are lower, the deck can be really like almost 45 degrees, almost vertical. So they were very different from one another. And the conditions that we had to analyze and design the saddle for 
was of course when it would be simply resting on the ground, when it would be uh, being transported by a self uh, SPMT. And uh, finally, when of course it was inside the sea transportation, inside the barge. So, talking only about the saddle design for the time being, <coughs> uh, this is for the, for the design of this structure, since we had this plated structure that was also uh, had this st its a stiffness linked to the stiffness of the of the saddle, so we decided to make finite element analysis in which we basically made the 3D model, the solid 3D model of the saddle together with the 2D model plated element of the, of the model itself. So for each one of the conditions, we had different boundary conditions and also loadings. And the basis of the design we did using the Euro codes, we applied also the safety factors for lifting and also for uh, transportation for the handling of heavy loads, as it was already described by my associate. For the resting of the stools, we considered then the, the dead loads and also some lateral wind loads. And the boundary condition was some simple supports that we had on, the, on those points. Then for the road transportation, we added in the model a rigid, uh, a rigid area that you can see here. And so we had then the frictional contact between the solid uh, flanges of the beams of the saddle that we had underneath so that we could actually model the, bend, the relative bending that we would have on the corners here. One very important aspect was the, making the analysis for the road transportation is that we didn't add any lateral wind, uh, wind loading because the premise here is that you have control over when you're going to make the operation. So you can actually select a day in which you don't have very strong winds. But one very important aspect is the tilting of the load. Uh, since we had these aromatic structures and the center of gravity was a little bit on the on the top of the column in most of the, of the cases, it could be because of the angle very high relative to the deck of the SPMT. So any tilt that you would have to the side, it could bring a lot of unbalance to the loads that you have on the hydraulic groups that you make. And then you could create an uns uh, unstable condition. As you can see here, you simply overload one of the, uh, one of the hydraulic groups that you have set on the load transportation, and then it simply well, falls apart. For the maritime transportation, then it was a little bit the same concept. We also added then a, 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 a larger block to the, uh, to the structure because we wanted to, uh, to count also for the frictional contact that you would have with the steel that you have for the deck of the ship. So we considered the dead, the dead load, of course. The wind load we didn't add, although you would have wind, high wind loads on the, on the sea. But it was a premise that these models would be inside the deck, so we don't have wind action there. For the sea loads, we, had, we went for the International Maritime Organization that gives you premises regarding the acceleration that, you can, that the barge can have, depending on the kind of sea you have. We had to consider that you have unrestricted sea because of that chunk that we have in the Atlantic. And since we have no control on the orientation of the module of the saddle regarding the, the, well, the vessel, we had to consider it that sideways for all the sides. So we actually had accelerations that were going forward uh, to the top, down, left, and right. Another aspect is that then we, had, uh, we added some supports here for lateral load from which then we acquired the, uh, the reaction loads, and this was a premise for us to give for the maritime carrier so that he would do the sea fastening by himself. <coughs> he would know exactly what would be the reactions that he would have. Then, as you can see, each one of the conditions, of course, it yields different uh, load distributions that we have being, as expected, the sea transport and the sea transportation the most critical case because of the magnitude of the lateral acceleration loads that we have. And that was also the case for the analysis then for the formizing analysis in the in the module itself. So the the good thing in this is that it we we took a little bit more of time to create this mod the models for each one of these parts. But then it was much easier for work, for us to work with the various different loading conditions that we had. 
Then talking a little bit about the lifting, when you have a, no, a customary lifting operation in which you have the rotation, the verticalization of the module that you want to install, such as for a, for a process tower or most of the structures that you would have, what happens here is that you would have the top lugs, as it's shown there by the by this line here in orange. So suppose you have then a line that is connecting these top lugs and another line that would be with the auxiliary lug passing through the center of gravity. This is perpendicular. So what happens here is that as you're making the verticalization of this of this module, you the this module does not tilt to the sides because the center of gravity is always in the same alignment with the line that you have on the top plug. But in the condition that we had in our modules, this is, was not applicable. As you can see here, this is the top-down view of one of the modules that we had. So we installed four lifting lugs. We needed four lifting lugs so that in the final phase of the operation, you could bring the deck to the as parallel as possible as you had to the to the ground plane. So in the beginning, you only had these two lugs that were active and then the tailing lug. But since these lines here, they're not perpendicular, what happens essentially is that as you're may lifting the module, the module is going to tilt to the side, okay? And this is super dangerous for our case because the center of gravity is above the stability plane. So what we found out that there was a very dangerous condition that could happen that as the module was being verticalized, it could tip over. And then if it tip over, you change completely the setting of the, of the zinc and the crane collapse. So this was the biggest challenge that we had and we had made very thorough, thorough analysis for all the modules that we were, that we were checking for the, for the project. And the solution that we found was to work with these dynamics that we have in the natural uh, transition of the verticalization operation. So we began with two sets of slings that were activated in the beginning as shown before. So the, the beginning of the, uh, the rotation operation, you have the cables on those, but you already have a little bit longer cables attached to the four slings. And the length of the third sling, that one that you can see that is still curvy there, was carefully adjusted so that at a certain point in a given inclination of this module during the rotation, it became taut. So as it became like taut, it made a basket with the three slings and then we contained the rotation operation by doing that. So we stopped the rotation in the middle and then we could finalize the rotation. Of course, with three slings and the fourth one then, when we finally got, this, uh, got it to the top, you still have the only three points of support. Then the fourth point of support and the final adjustment of these links was made with camalons. Basically, that device that then the person has to go on a man lift and pull it manually. It was the only way to completely uh, make the, the alignment. Here you have some, some pictures of, uh, of the, one of the operations. So as you can see there, we still have the, 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 the earlier phases of the operation. So only two of the top cables are taught there. And then this is the, exactly the moment in which the third sling gets activated. So the rotation, the, the well, you can, it's even clear that the rotation on the on its own axis happened here. But then like the fourth sling is still not activated, but we already have the three ones working as a basket to ensure the safety of the operation. So just some words about the lifting lug design. The, the, in this case, since, the structures were heavy and we had this surface of a, or the deck was just this plate structure. It was difficult to, for us just to weld a lifting lug to the top of this, of this plate because we would be putting a lot of out of, out of plane load in there. Here you can see actually like a little bit like the, the inside of the deck, how it looked like. And this would be from the bottom, bottom up how it would look. So we cannot put on a, a lifting lug directly on the top there, especially because these stiffeners here, due to the fabrication process, it is a closed structure. So eventually you have to weld something from the outside and you cannot weld all, this, all the corners to everything. You don't have access. So these here, you can see that they are not reaching the other stiffener. 
because it feels updated that any kind of thought you can only then run the scenes on the side. So you cannot have that world there. That would be very beneficial for us if we were to put a, a, a drifting world there. So what we came up with is that since we already had a lot of radio stiffness around, just put the drifting hook in the middle, attach it directly to the to the radio stiffness. That is the best lower load path that you would have for a drifting hook, because then you are actually you no know, basically putting the plate in some plane. Uh, in this situation here, this was the first one that we made, so some parts were already fabricated and we couldn't do it. In the other ones, this here was actually, the, the stiffener plate was cut and the lug was embedded. In the first one, we had to weld to the side. And then, well, uh, just going back a little bit, so the, for the lifting lug, we also used this, that very same uh, finite element model that we had for all the, so, it, it became practical in the end, and uh, we made the checks for all of, for several different angles because also you have a lot of different well, well inclinations of the loads in each one of the of the different loads. So the, as a result, here you can see a little bit like the load distribution that you have in the lifting load. One of the important things is that you can clearly see some bending there in that first image that you have on the left top side. Uh, because it, in this situation, it was impossible for us to avoid having bending on the lifting lugs. But because as we were making the rotation, eventually the angle of this link had to go out of the plane of the lifting lug. And here also, since this one was the welded one to the, to the face, you can also see some bending here that you would have on the plate. But then this effect here in the other one, if you would have it embedded, it would be a little bit better. In then the, the best part is that on the plates on the top we really have very low loads with this kind of uh, configuration. So as a conclusion, the attention items, the very important ones, is that if you really have to check when you're, you have the rotation of a complex structure, if you are having some dynamics that is happening between the points of support at the center of gravity and the tailing lug. So the top lugs and the tailing lug and the center of gravity. If they're not perpendicular, and especially if the center of gravity is above the three points, then you have a red flag there that you really have to pay attention. And of course, complex structures require careful erection engineering, and you have to pay attention to the lifting lugs, because the lifting lugs, they may be one nowadays, one of the few elements that we have structure engineering that really see the loads that you're calculating for. So, and, uh, well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Yeah, I'm wondering if you had to check the permanent structure for the temporary loads, and if you did, if that resulted in any of the permanent structure having loads beyond the capacity, something that they thicken or reinforce or anything. Well, we checked, and in one of the iterations that we had for the lifting lugs, as we were reaching the final solution, we even thought about adding some stiffness to the bottom of that plate. It, uh, it wasn't enough to contain the bending, actually. But in this case, we checked the structure, but it wasn't really necessary for us to add, uh, to change sections, uh, increase the thickness of the plate or whatnot. It wasn't really necessary in this case. Okay. We added some uh, pads in just one location. Yes. Yeah, yes, just a, for that lifting one. Yeah. It's a company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay.